This time on Custom Works, we've got a whole new project. We've got the 60s truck. We're going to fit bags on it. We're going to make a tilt and slide thing that holds a motorbike. It's going to look a bit like the Golden Tara when it's done. It's going to be so awesome. Let's get to the workshop. So, before we get going, just to say, if you notice my voice sounds different, it's because I'm having a massive amount of dental work done. When I was about nine, obviously I was always on my bike, came off my bike, smashed one of my front teeth out. Um, I've had it patched up all of my life, and now I've got to have an implant, so I have to wear like this big plate to do something to my teeth. I don't know, it's all dentistry. If I understood it, I would have fixed it myself. But anyway, that's why I may sound slightly different. Okay, the 60s truck. I say it's a, it's a new build, and a, uh, a couple of weeks ago we did those suicide doors, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run through what we're gonna do here. So, here is, in none of its glory, the, the base vehicle. And it's, and it seems to be all the time at the minute, it's a taxi. But this is what it's gonna look like. If any of you are like, really into um, customs from the 60s and stuff, you'll know the car, the Golden Sahara. It's a car I really like with Dualatron. I sort of did a, an homage on the front of a Dualatron to the Golden Sahara. I'm going to go a little bit further with this though. This, this truck is going to be really down that route. Imagine the Golden Sahara but a pickup truck. So we're going to have the four bunny ear fins at the back. It's going to have the F100 front. We're going to use um, canted stack lights in it. It's going to sit super low at the back. And this truck's main thing, yeah it's a truck, yeah it's going to be a cool awesome truck, but the whole thing it's being built for is to carry an even more awesome chop motorbike. Now then, putting the motorbike in the back of a pickup truck, things you've got to think of. The motorbike's going to weigh a lot, um, this is a taxi, um, so we, we're doing some suspension work on the back. You've got to be easy to get it on and off, and also it's got to fit. A motorbike is always way longer than you think it is, and you know the temptation is just to stretch the back of the truck so it goes in. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it so it's only long when there's a motorbike on it, and when there's not a motorbike, everything's shut up nice and tight, and the truck still looks in proportion without having been a bit, a bit long at the back. So we're doing a full power tilt and slide to get the bike into the bed. Now the way I'm going to do this to get it in, I'm going to put airbags on the back of the truck. So the back of the truck comes down and then out the back of the truck comes the, uh, you know, like the ramp and it's going to be more like a channel that the bike sits in. You put your bike on there, then press a button, it comes up, it tilts. And then the front wheel and the front of the bike is going to sink into the cab. So the front wheel actually sits between the seats inside the cab. Obviously that front wheel will be covered with, uh, you know, with the centre console. Won't just be driving along next to the tyre and thing. Wish I would have ridden through all that dog poo. <laughs> but it will all be covered. All upholstered and all nice. But that makes the bed that little bit shorter. So what we're going to be doing today is putting all of the bits together to make the back of the trunk go up and down and putting in a cross brace so we've got somewhere to pivot that rear ramp. And I've got to say, this whole thing does seem a little bit abstract, a little bit hard to get your head around at the minute, but I'm sure as it comes together, um, it will become more apparent. Uh, least of all, to me, uh, I'm not really, I've not really got it all straight in my head because it is so complicated. But we will get there and it will be done. Right, and so obviously with the 60s truck, I'm not going to show you every single thing. So I think we've all seen, you know, making the fiberglass front, making the fiberglass or the bits of the car. So perhaps we won't be showing that, we won't be showing everything, but um, we'll be showing all the different stuff we're going to do on the whole car. So today what we're looking at, we're looking at making those rear arms for the air ride on the back and how we're going to make those rear arms, how we're going to make it all work and put it all together. So 
for the rear arm, anything that pivots has got to have like a pivot point. So to replace the rear bushes on the back of the arm, we've had an uh, engineering legend, Dave Lathe, take these and all of these bits. So what we have is these bearings that fit in there, and then these bits that go into there, and then they meet in the middle. They meet in the middle and then that bolts into a mount on the chassis and gives us lovely smooth articulation in the rear of the car. Just need to weld this heavy gauge box to there and then bolt it back under the axle with the U-bolts, attach the airbags and that's it. Job done. They really are just so nice. It almost feels at the minute like, you know, I'm not just a man on his own in a shed. It feels like I have a team with hot rod legend Lee Cox and engineering legend Dave Lathe. I, I don't feel quite as alone anymore. Right, so that's the two swing arms, uh, painted, done a coat of H primer, gone over them in a coat of matte black, uh, they're good to go in. All I'm going to do now is just put them in the low bake oven for five minutes. All dry, all ready to fit. And you know what? They've got these lovely bearings in the back, we paint them up, they look like a professional part, but then again, you sort of want that when it's going to hold the whole axle in the car, don't you? So we've made these radius arms and they've got the bearing end that's in the leaf spring mount up there, it's super strong. And then we've got these U-bolts through the original shock mount, which we've spun round so we can run a shock probably up here somewhere, because the bag's going to fit about here. Um, and we've got all that bolted down. And on this side, you can see, we put this locating bolt in to locate uh, into the hole under the axle where the leaf spring used to connect. And we will, what we'll do, just like on that side, we're going to drop the U-bolts over there and then mount this with the, this lower shock mount at the front of the axle so we can mount the shock there. And we've got loads of nice clear room for those massive airbags at the back. Right, and so, everything is in there. 
both these arms and everything bolted up super strong. Now what we're going to do is put the bag mounts in the back. What we did notice when, um, when we put this to full drop so it sits on its bump stops, we did notice that this, this was fouling the prop shaft that we welded in. So we've cut that out. This is, uh, it's welded to the chassis both sides. So I should imagine it's playing strong enough, but it was definitely, it was bottoming out on that. But now we've got nothing in the way of the prop. So time to put those bag mounts on. From when we did the meat wagon, I kept all the AutoCAD drawings and I've had all these bits laser cut. Um, and that is the top mount, that's the bottom mount. We've also got uh, these brackets that uh, are linked to the axle, but go around all the brake lines. So these are going to make all of this a hell of a lot easier just to all drop together. Uh, okay then, so we've got everything cleaned up in here. The chassis cleaned up and the mount. And we've got both of our brackets welded and bolted, sorry, to the bag. We're about to tack them in place. So we've got some tacked into place. We'll do the other side and then we'll check that everything moves and uh, nothing fouls or anything like that. And then we'll weld it up. Got some seam welds on there, I'm going to seam around everywhere I can seam, I'm going to seam to make this really, really strong. You'll notice as well, I took the bag out while we're doing this because obviously you don't want to burn a hole in the bag. At the back, uh, we used to have the fuel tank, but we can't have that back there no more because that's where the ramp for the motorbike to come on is going to be uh, this sort of tilt and slide ramp. So we have uh, moved the fuel tank up to here and we've built this frame in in this 2x2 two two box and we've got these uh, bits of rubbers to, so, to cut down the vibration to the fuel. We've got all this primed up and now ready to fit the tank into place. The tank is in place and uh, we've packed it up on these rubber mounts just so it doesn't, the prop shaft don't catch it. However, this is a full drop at the minute. A couple of other things we've done. We've welded in this um, almighty piece of a two by four box. And that is what we're gonna pivot the, the tilt and slide ramp thing on the back from on there. And also, um, in sort of happy coincidence, we'll be able to weld these bag mounts to that also. So, it's strong. I think at the minute, uh, the back of this car is about a thousand times stronger than it was early this morning. Another thing we've done it, we mounted the fuel tank not in the centre over to that side, and hopefully what we're going to do is get the compressor and the air tanks tucked neatly away just there, so um, and nice and out of the way. Okay, so everything's welded up, everything's cooled down, so it's time to put the bags back in and see it go up and down. Total result. Um, it goes up and down, nothing catches, nothing fouls, the bags aren't rubbing on anything. Um, absolute win, I think. I think. Yeah, I know. Okay, so don't forget, we got those t shirts, we got some sick merch going on. All on Etsy, and coming up, we're gonna have a larger range of sizes. And how to get those sweet, sweet quality t shirts is down in the description below. Okay, so that is it. Another week, Custom Works is over. 
I don't need to remind you all to do that. Click subscribe, the bell icon and all that. Good Lord, you're all adults. So then, we are now looking down the barrel of seven days before the next episode. Time will elapse and all of that. In the meantime, get on with your own projects, do your own things, get to the workshop and all of that. Thank you very much and good night.